Hi friends, how are you all? I'm sure rocking as always. Let's continue our journey of arithmetic further. So we have already done three videos, three sessions on percentages. I'm sure you have watched them, taken the notes, you have understood everything properly. Yeah. Now in next three videos, including today's video, we'll be focusing more on ratios and its applications. All right. Then second pillar of arithmetic as we had discussed in the beginning. So let's start and the ratio, nothing new for you. Okay. All right. Now, when I say ratio, very familiar term. We have used it so many times. In fact, percentage, percentage also was a ratio only, right? When I say 20%, it simply means 20 divided by 100. So if you reduce it two divided by 10, so ultimately one divided by five, which can also be written as one is to five is two. That is how we read it. Yeah. So let's take one more example, famous example, easy to understand. There's a milk. Suppose I added 24 liters of milk in a vessel and then I added, yes, 60 liters of water, 60 liters of water. Okay. These are actual quantities. Now, if you reduce this, correct. If you reduce this, that milk was 24, water was 60. So if I take ratio means compare it. See for comparison, the quantities which you are choosing should be of same nature. So here, both of them are liquids. Secondly, both of them should have same units. So both of them are liters here. Yeah. So 24 is to 60 or 24 upon 60. Since it is in the division form, you can easily cancel it further. So 12 into 2, 12 into 5, so 12 gets cancelled. So I can write it as 2 is to 5. Yeah. You can call it as 2 is to 5 or you can call it as 2 parts of milk and 5 parts of water. So total quantity is 7 parts. Since you are not sure about the actual quantity, right? So when ratio is given, it's just a comparison in the most reduced form. This, these numbers may not give you the actual values, friends. Hence, we prefer to say it as parts. One part, five part, like that. So here two parts, five parts. Okay. So milk is to water is two is to five. Correct. And then one more thing we should understand is what is fraction of milk? Now, fraction of milk is two out of seven parts. So fraction of any component means that component divided by total for total. How, what, how will you get total? You have to add all the components. So milk is two out of seven. Water is five out of seven. Okay. All right. So in general, suppose if I write the ratio is A is to B. A is also called as antecedent. And B is called as consequent. You might get these words sometimes. So be careful. Okay, friends. Then, suppose here only if I take an example of milk and water, 2 is to 5 is the ratio in the most reduced form. So how will you convert this into actual values? Will it be 2 and 5 only? No, it may be 4 and 10. It may be 6 and 15 and so on. So many possibilities are there, right? So in general, how can we write them? Yes, 2K and 5K where K is a common multiple or 2X, 5X, whatever. So that is how we convert a ratio into actual numbers, actual values. Yeah. And of course, there's one unknown K. So in the question, one hint or one clue will be given to you to find that K. You just have to use that smartly. That's it. Okay. So to convert ratio into actual values, we can use the common multiple K. Yeah. All right. Comfortable. Cool. Let's go ahead. Some properties, some situations, some shortcuts. So if you are given something like this, a by seven equal to b by five equal to c by four. So what should be the ratio of a is to b to c? In school, we should do it like this. Let all of them be equal to k. Yeah. So a is 7k, b is 5k, c is 4k. And if you reduce it further in the ratio, k will get cancelled. So ultimately 7 is to 5 is to 4. In short, you can take any value of k. I can take it as 1 also, right? k is 1. So a upon, a upon 7 is 1. So A has to be 7. Then only A upon 7 will be 1. So B upon 5 should also be 1 since they are all equal. So B should be 5 to maintain that 1. Similarly, C should be 4 to get it 1 to give us 1. 
so that is how we do it so you should remember if this kind of situation exists that is equality is there between all the ratios then ratio of the numerators will be same as ratio of the denominators all right okay got it cool i hope you are taking the notes properly yes second situation you can pause the video and write your own notes of course you know that sorry but theek hai this kind of situation when ratios are in terms of fractions and of course who who prefers fractions so you want good numbers cute numbers also in technical terms integers so i want to multiply all of them multiplying are hello what did we learn in the beginning how to convert ratio into actual value common multiple so we can multiply all the term by the same number ratio won't be disturbed right so let that number be a number which is there in the table of 7 5 and 4 and that we call it as lcm table of 7 table of 5 table of 4 tino ke table mein hona chahiye so lcm so multiply all these three terms by 140 so 1 by 7 into 140 20 1 by 5 into 140 28 One by four into one forty, thirty-five. So this is the better version of the same ratio, right? So we can deal with the numbers comfortably. Twenty, twenty-eight, thirty-five. Okay, friends. Simple, cool. Now, if something like this is also given, seven times a equal to five times b equal to four times c. Same thing equal to k. So a is k by seven, b is k by five, c is k by four. Again, that k should be a number which is there in the table of seven, five, and four. Yes, LCM, one forty. So next step will be this only, right? So we conclude like this: if seven equal to five, b equal to four c, ultimately a b c is twenty, twenty eight, thirty five. One more thing you can observe here, maybe a glamorous way of presenting the same thing: chupa chupi, hide and seek. If you want a. Hide the term. Hide the coefficient of a. Multiply other two. Multiply other two. So five into four. See twenty. If you want to find the term corresponding to b, hide b. So multiply other two. So seven into four. Hide c. Similarly, so five into seven. So hide and seek. Okay. Yeah. But ultimately, logic was LCM only. So this was the second situation. Cool. Now sometimes you will be given two ratios with one connecting term. So here, suppose a is to b is three is to five, b is to c is four is to nine. You want to find a is to b is to c. That is your merging two ratios through b. So b, the term corresponding to b should be same, na? In short, this five and four both should become a number, same number, same number, but it should be a multiple only. Like five k, four k, so दोनों के डबल में होना चाहिए. Twenty. That is that nothing but LCM only. तो फाइव को ट्वेंटी बनाना है मतलब इंटू फोर करना पड़ेगा तो थ्री इंटू फोर ऑल्सो बिकम ट्वेल्व अल्टीमेटली एज टू बी का दूसरा वर्जन मिल गया ट्वेल्व इज टू ट्वेंटी रेशियो इज नॉट डिस्टर्ब फोर इट इज स्टिल थ्री टू फाइव ओनली करेक्ट एंड बी टू सी फोर इज टू नाइन है तो फोर को ट्वेंटी करना है इंटू फाइव सो ट्वेंटी इज टू फोर्टी फाइव सो बी बिकेम सेम वी कैन मर्ज सो वी कैन सी दैट एज टू बी इज टू सी इज ट्वेल्व इज टू ट्वेंटी इज टू फोर्टी फाइव अंडरस्टूड Yes, champions. Yes, friends. Cool. That way you can merge two or more ratios with one common term. Correct. Now, if A, B, C, D, E, and F are in proportion, when they say they are in proportion, what does that mean? So, ratio of two two terms at a time, A upon B same as C upon D, it's same as E upon F. So, the ratio remains same throughout. Then we say the terms involved in them in that order are in proportion. So, A, B. C D E F are in proportion. That is the meaning of proportion. So it's nothing but a mathematical statement which tells tells us the equivalence between two or more ratios. Okay, all right. Similarly, there is something called as continued proportion. Here, example one, two, three, six, four. It are in proportion, right? Because you can check the ratio. One by two is same as three by six, which is same as four by eight. So you can say one, two, three, four, six. Uh, one, two. Sorry, one, two, three, six. Four eight are in proportion, pairwise. Okay, all right. Then there is something called as continued proportion. Continued. The word itself is self-explanatory. So there should be one common term. So A upon B will be same as B upon C will be same as C upon D. So the C continuity is not broken. The new numerator is same as old denominator. Same way here. Or I can also use that antecedent consequent language. It's fine. Okay. 
one more big thing is there here in case of continuous proportion friends see example 1 2 4 8 are in continuous proportion isn't it because 1 by 2 is same as 2 by 4 which is same as 4 by 8 and if you know something about what geometric progression of course that we will be doing in detail in algebra yeah that is already uploaded you can go and check in progressions yeah so 1 2 4 Two, four, four, eight are in continuous progression. That is fine, but they are also in geometric progression, right? One into two, into two, into two. So whenever the multiplying factors are same, uh, factor is same. Sorry, then that particular sequence is geometric progression. So yeah, this is your first term, and then multiplying factor, which is also what is common ratio, is two. So in case of continuous progression, there is always a GP. Okay, this can be used as a good shortcut in the questions. Understood? thank you one more so here you see three ratios all of them are equal suppose then i am just introducing some common terms not that compulsory you can safely ignore also invert into means what just invert it so if a by b is same as c by d same as e by f then b by a will also be same as d by c f by e isn't it common sense similarly there is one more so a by c will be same as b by d so we interchanged b and c Because that cross multiplication may there will be same only, right? So a by b is equal to c by d. So a into d is same as b into c. So you can take c down here and d down here, right? That is dividing. Down means dividing. Similarly, you can also say c by e is same as e uh, d by f. This particular thought or a by e is equal to b by f. So this particular thought as a term is called as alternando. नहीं भी याद रहेगा इट्स एब्सोल्युटली फाइन डोंट स्ट्रेस एट ऑल फॉर दीज थिंग्स ओके नेक्स्ट वाज इंटरेस्टिंग यू नो इफ आई ऐड वन थ्रू आउट ऑल ऑफ देम आर इक्वल सो इफ आई ऐड वन थ्रू आउट अगेन इक्वालिटी वोंट बी डिस्टर्ब्ड राइट देन वी गेट दीस पर्टिकुलर स्ट्रक्चर्स ए बाय ए प्लस बी बाय बी सी प्लस डी बाय डी ई प्लस एफ बाय एफ दैट इज न्यूमरेटर प्लस डिनोमिनेटर डिवाइडेड बाय डिनोमिनेटर करेक्ट ना ये एन बाई डी में प्लस वन करूंगा तो यही आएगा ना तो दिस पर्टिकुलर स्ट्रक्चर इज कॉम्पोनेंडो एंड इन शेड ऑफ एडिंग वन इफ अब्रैक्ट वन इट बिकम्स डिविडेंडो न्यूमिनेटर माइनस डिनोमिनेटर डिवाइड बाय डिनोमिनेटर दैट इज नथिंग बट एन बाई डी माइनस वन एंड इफ यू टेक रेशियो ऑफ बोथ दिस कॉम्पोनेंट एंड डिविडेंडो वी गेट दिस या so the format here is numerator plus denominator divided by numerator minus denominator or you can revert it also at invert endo so from this stage you should also be able to visualize this stage and vice versa if this is given then this should also click generally ulta wala click nahi hota okay all right comfortable cool one more important thought if all these ratios are equal suppose they are all equal to r then we can do some structural changes the value will still not be disturbed as long as it is legal structural changes see i added the numerators sometimes koi bhi add karo dekho and add all these numerators here the ratio will still be r you can do a minus c upon b minus d also you can do a minus e upon b minus f c minus e upon d minus f a minus e minus e upon b minus d minus f similar process in numerator numerator and denominator if you do and then you combine them like this the value is not disturbed yeah for example 2 by 5 is same as uh 10 by 25 right if i add the numerator 2 plus 10 divide by 5 plus 25 let's see so 12 divide by 30 it is still 2 by 5 equal to that something like that so you can easily verify with numbers this is nothing but property of equal ratios one of the important properties for solving tricky questions okay cool let's go ahead friends i hope you are understanding now variation next connecting thought is variation and there are two types of variations direct and inverse variation as the name suggests we are trying to study the behavior between two changing values for example first in which the change happens in the same direction that is when one increases other also increases and vice versa okay so one increases other also increases proportionately and vice versa so we write this as y is directly proportional to x uska next step kya hota hai y is equal to k times x 
you know friends if i don't introduce k that is a constant of proportionality k is called as constant of proportionality what will happen if i just said y equal to x so you are just saying y will always be equal to x no na not compulsory y can be double of x y can be half of x y can be triple of x and so on so from that we can also say that ratio will remain constant that is y divided by x constant this is your k only so whenever the ratio of two variables is constant that should click that both the variables are directly proportional yes isn't it okay for example very famous one speed is equal to distance upon time and if speed is constant so the ratio of distance and time is constant so distance will be directly proportional to time yeah let's take example suppose speed is 50 km per hour so in one hour the distance travel will be 50 km now distance doubled so time also doubled same direction may both both are changing distance became four times 50 into 4 so for that we will need four hours right time also became four times similarly 10 times each and then 13 times and so on you can see both are changing in the same direction proportionately graphically if you want to plot this aisa graph with a straight line passing through origin this we have done in a video in algebra called as coordinate geometry there you can check so y is equal to mx m is slope so you can treat this as y upon x is equal to constant right yes okay so this is your direct variation ultimately you can write it as y1 upon x1 is equal to y2 upon x2 is can next step this can also be written as x1 upon x2 is equal to y1 upon y2 same variables on one side that's it oh alternate do apna okay so if y is directly proportional to x uska next step we can write directly like this no need to introduce k and all until it is required okay got it cool let's go ahead next is inverse inverse thought hi aa gaya opposite so one quantity increases other decreases proportionality means both of them change in the opposite manner opposite direction change hota so we write it like this y is proportional to 1 by x or we can call it as y is inversely proportional to x okay yeah so in this case if you write it as y is equal to k upon x so y into x will be k the product is constant for example distance is, so when how will you remember this whenever the product of two variables is constant it should immediately click that both the variables are inversely proportional okay so for example distance is speed into time if distance is constant speed and time are inversely proportional this is logical also right a fixed distance you want to travel if you go at a very high speed of course you will take very less time right but if you go slowly aram se you will take more time that's it let's say example distance you will travel is 100 km suppose your speed is 100 km per hour so you will take only 1 hour right and if your speed became half speed became 50 so you will take 2 hours so speed halved time doubled this one is called as inverse relation right friends speed became 1/4 the time became 4 times speed became 1/10 the time became 10 times graphically it is like this also called as rectangular hyperbola but that's fine kuch nahi bola you can ignore so as x is increasing y is decreasing proportionately at any point of time the product will be constant so that is how you can write y1 x1 equal to y2 x2 or y1 upon y2 is x2 upon x1 so after this step you can think of this step directly by avoiding finding k if it is not required understood friends yeah this much basics about ratios you should know properly friends to face any question based on ratio and proportion all right i hope you understood you have taken the notes properly thank you so much take care stay safe keep learning happy learning bye bye